Welcome back everybody. Today I'm talking about proper tail calls and how that can lead to tail call optimization. So first of all, what is a proper tail call? It is a style of writing recursive functions that allows for tail call optimization, which is done by the, in this case, JavaScript engine. So oftentimes those terms are used interchangeably, but uh, the dev implements proper tail calls so that the engine can implement tail call optimization, which allows for better memory management. So we're going to start out by implementing a very uh, basic function. All it does is uh, give us the length of an array. So it is equivalent to calling dot length on an array, but the point here is to explore proper tail calls, not a really impressive recursive function. So we're just going to call this size. So it'll just be a function called size, and we need to have our base case and then our recursive call. So as is the typical pattern, we'll be relying on destructuring the input array so that we have a first element that we can evaluate and then the rest of the uh, array. So we will start by doing that. And then our base case is going to be if the array is empty. So if we just return zero, this would be because we have no elements in the array, which means that x equals undefined. Because if there's no first element, then there's no rest of the elements. So we can just return zero as the length or size of that array. Otherwise, what we can do is add the value that we know. So we know we have at least one value in the array, so one, plus the size or length of the rest of the array. So we can just recursively call size and pass in the rest of the array. So let me just save this and we'll make sure that my, <laughs> my janky little tests pass. I actually wrote proper tests for this and then I realized it was a waste of time because they don't really fit on the screen very well. Uh, so actually let me clear all the junk there and then we can run this. And there we go. So test pass, basically just showing that this function is equivalent to calling dot length. Great. So what's the problem with this function? The problem is that this function doesn't use proper tail calls. So put simply, uh, the, or the way you'll see it most commonly described, proper tail call is when the last thing that a function does in its recursive call, so not the base case, is make a function call. So we'll see what that looks like after we uh, refactor this function a bit. But what does that mean in practice? What is the problem with not having that? Well, right now we have one plus the size of the rest of the array. So that means that the one, which we know is the length of the single element that we know we have, is waiting for the evaluation of this recursive call. And so, it can't do anything, it can't return a value until that has completed. So what this ends up looking like is if we had our stack, we're first going to pass in the first call, which is size with the initial array. So we'll do it with the, with the array one, one, two, three. So imagine that we had size and then r one. So we have one, two, three. I'll actually write it out, that's probably a little clearer. One, two, three. Right, so that's the first, that's the first call that we make. And then when we have that call, we see that it's not going to hit our base case. So we're going to return one plus and then another call to size. And this would be with two and three. And then that's not going to return the base case. So it's going to be one plus size three. And then that's not going to return the base case. So it's going to be one plus well, it's going to be the, yeah, one plus and then size, empty array, and that's going to return zero. So then we have zero, which means that this line evaluates to one plus zero, which is one, which means that this line will evaluate to one plus one. So then we get two, which means that this line would be one plus two, which means that this line returns three which is our proper 
Answer. What's the problem with this? The problem with this is that our stack is going to be actually longer than the input array, but it's going to be directly proportional, and that's the issue. We have, because we haven't used proper tail calls, the stack continues to grow through each recursive call. But if we use proper tail calls, then we can actually keep one element in the stack, or one item in the stack, at all times. So let's take a look at how we can do that. Again, this is going to be focused on the principle of <laughs> proper tail calls and tail call optimization, not necessarily the most mind-blowing functions ever. So suppose that we had another input to this function, but at the call site, the initial call site, we're not going to pass that in. So we'll just call it count, and it will be initialized at zero, because nobody's going to pass that value in, but we need an initial value for it. So, that will be initialized at zero. Now all we need to do is, if x is undefined, instead of returning zero, we return count, because that's still going to be true, because count initializes to zero. Okay? And then, we can just return size, with the second parameter being count plus one. So we've just moved the increment inside of the recursive call, but we've provided all of the required state in this line. So now, let's just make sure I'm actually not showing you a broken function. Cool, so that's still doing what it's supposed to do. Now what we have is our stack, where we call size, probably should have left at least one of these in, one, two, three, and the next call would be size, uh, two, three, with an initial count, again, this is an implicit zero, of one, but this doesn't, re or I should say this, doesn't rely on the return value of this call. So tail call optimization says that we can pop this off the stack. So then this doesn't need to be included anymore, and the only item on the stack is this call, the second call to size. And likewise, when we go to the next call, and it would be size three, count of two, this is completely independent. We could pass this in right now and get the correct answer. It doesn't care about anything that's happened previous, and these don't care about anything that's happened next. This is entirely independent from this, which is entirely independent from this. And then when we call size with our empty array, it's going to have three, which returns the count, which is three. And that's our correct answer. These don't need to return values, because all they did was pass the state through each recursive call. It said, we started with zero, and then we had at least one value, so I passed one and the rest of the array. Then we had another value, so we incremented that. So now we have at least two values, and I'll pass you the rest of the array. And then this one says, all right, we have at least three values, and what's the rest of the array? The rest of the array is empty, so we just return three. And that's all tail call recursion is, or proper tail calls, that's all <laughs> that is involved with a proper tail call. It allows the engine to implement tail call optimization, which prevents you from having a massive stack, which can cause memory issues, so stack overflows. And that's all it is. Obviously, recursion can get a lot more complicated than a simple count that gets incremented each time, but the principle is exactly this. So if you've been confused about tail call recursion or proper tail calls, maybe what tail call optimization is, why it matters, hopefully this was simple enough that it gave you that light bulb moment, and if not, ask your questions down below. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.